um, in the weight room. So let me in uh, admit them. I have to say that every afternoon at 3.50, I, well, starting at 3.40, I start hosting the afternoon announcements. I always have a musical theme of the day. So uh, folks join me sometime between 3.40 and 3.50 just to check out what's playing on Hunter Radio. And then um, uh, at 3.50, I host our afternoon announcements live. Uh, and it's a bit interactive with students and staff. So um, feel free to join in and see us. We, we stream that live on Facebook uh, in the afternoon. So if you want to check out what's happening in the GLOW community, uh, you can do so. Um, but I say all of that to say, oftentimes in the announcements, I'm managing multiple things at one time, like letting people in from the weight room while I'm trying to talk. So I'm, I'm well adept at this. All right. So we are the Girls Leadership Academy of Wilmington. We uh, are uh, here, we are in our fifth year of operation. So we opened our doors in 2016 to 100 fabulous sixth graders. Uh, those sixth graders are now amazingly 10th graders and are starting to literally drive their cars to school. And I feel like such a mother with them. I can't believe that they've grown up enough to, to be driving their cars to school already. Um, so we will graduate our first senior class of, uh, of students in 2023, um, and by that point, we will be a fully built out 6th through 12th grade continuum. Uh, and our mission is really related to girls' education um, and all the things that surround that. So not just academics, but leadership development, confidence building, um, self-advocacy, uh, helping our girls find their voice and feeling comfortable using it to advocate for themselves um, and, uh, and getting the social and emotional supports that many adolescent girls need to kind of navigate uh, through adolescence safely and securely and as conflict-free as possible uh, so that they arrive on the, on the other end uh, pretty uh, self-assured adults. Um, so that, that's why we exist. That's why we're here. Um, so historically speaking, we are North Carolina's first and currently only single gender public charter school, uh, which is exciting for us. We were our, we are coming up on February 10th is our Founders Day. So February 10th, 2014, our charter was approved by the North Carolina um, State Board of Education. And we were the first charter approved in 10 years at that point by, a, by uh, um, a unanimous vote by the State Board of Education. They had a lot of uh, confidence in us um, as, a, as an organization. So we're the, the first single gender public charter school. There are a couple of um, all girls schools that are percolating out there in the universe in North Carolina, but they haven't really come to fruition yet. What you see in front of you is our campus. So if you haven't been here, um, we are located off of Kerr Avenue. Um, we are on the other side of New Center Drive. So uh, I guess if you were really interested in walking to Target, you could do so from our school eventually. Um, we were not always here. We started in a very small building um, over behind St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. And we were there for the first three years of our existence. And um, then like a great clown car, we all poured out of that building, which was 12,000 square feet. And we moved into this building, which is uh, over 60,000 square feet um, and it's beautiful. And, uh, and we uh, were able to build this building, at, or buildings, plural, there are five buildings on our campus, with the incredible help of an all-women's architectural team who came together to design our building. Our students were involved in the, in the design process as well. Um, our faculty and staff were involved in the design process. And if you were to peel back the walls of this building, you would find that everybody has signed a girder somewhere, leaving their, a little piece of their, their heart uh, in the soul of what has come to be uh, this iteration of GLOW Academy. Um, so we are a public school. We're a North Carolina public charter school. We are the only, um, one of only 3% of North Carolina public charter schools that um, uh, have the mission to 
really strategically serve a large diverse population of students and so we um, for example have a full transportation program we run buses within all of new hanover county lines we have a free um, breakfast and lunch program for for all of our students we're a community school um, we uh, have a free after school program for our students um, uh, and, and we have a weighted lottery so we can wait for uh, free and reduced lunch population. So we really wanna be a diverse population, um, racially, ethnically, socioeconomically, um, because we wanna build as inclusive an environment as possible. Um, we don't exist by ourselves. So we are actually part of a sister network of schools. So uh, GLOW is the 18th school in a network of affiliates uh, across the country. And we, we share a model with the Young Women's Leadership Network. So this network of schools is uh, a network of schools that get started in East Harlem, New York back in 1996. Um, and has grown over time. GLOW is unique in that network in that most schools in the Young Women's Leadership Network are in really big cities like New York or Dallas or Baltimore. Um, but we are in kind of a smaller city, Wilmington. Um, uh, and so we, we're kind of unique in that way. We also are the only school outside of Texas that's really in the South that is part of the Young Women's Leadership Network. But we, we share a model, uh, we share uh, common practices, uh, we share uh, wisdom with each other, um, and we share the passion for uh, bringing uh, public girls' schools um, to the forefront of, of research and design here in the United States. Uh, and we are engaged in that work all the time. In fact, I was on a meeting with the principals from the Young Women's Leadership Network earlier this week. Um, within the network, we share data, and one of the data points that I think is really important is that we are, we're continuum, so kids come in hopefully in sixth grade, we do enroll new students up through ninth grade, but no new students come into our program after ninth grade, and uh, they hopefully continue with us all the way to graduation, um, because our mission for our for our students is for the, every kid that comes to our program to have a really solid success plan when she graduates from high school. Um, and that success plan can take her in a number of different directions, but ultimately our goal is for everybody to be in a place where they can be self-sufficient and financially independent and uh, have uh, the career choice they wanna have, whether that's going to community college or a four-year university program or a specialized training program. Our mission is to make that happen for the kid um, and for the family. Um, within the Young Women's Leadership Network, the numbers are pretty amazing. So um, kids that stay through um, from sixth through 12th grade, um, across those now 19 schools across the network, uh, there is a graduation rate of greater than 95%, which is really amazing. And then, of those girls, uh, there is generally speaking about a 100% college enrollment rate. So um, what's even more staggering or surprising or fabulous in terms of that data is girls that come through this program are 300 times more likely to graduate from college after after four to five years um, than their, their, their co-educational peers that enter into college at the same time. Um, and that, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out exactly why that is, but it probably is likely um, due to the incredible amount of support that kids that come out of this program get as they enter into college. Uh, they are much more likely to finish freshman and sophomore year unscathed and ready to go. Um, and that's because our program doesn't end at high school graduation. It continues on with a lifetime of network supports. Any questions so far? Yes, what question do you have? You're gonna have to unmute yourself. Um, do you guys have uniforms? I love that you asked that question because I think maybe I might be getting to that slide. It might even be the next slide. So Jennifer, hold on just a second. It's not, no, it's not Jennifer, it is Annabelle. 
I don't know. I don't remember. You're going to remind me of your name in a minute. Um, no, it's the next slide after this one. So uh, what's the benefit of an all girls school? Well, there are a lot of benefits and, and certainly you can ask our students um, what the benefits are and they'll give you a wide range of answers. But research says, and, and we see it playing out here on our campus, that girls who go through a middle school and a high school experience with, uh, in a single gender environment are more likely to feel more confident, uh, most especially in courses that are traditionally male dominated, science, math, computer science, um, are, and we certainly see that on our campus. Um, so they're more likely to feel more confident and participate more in those courses. They tend to score higher on standardized tests, most especially at the high school level when it's related to ACT and SAT. Um, they tend to like doing academic work more and are pretty competitive with each other to spur each other on so that they can be successful. And they really report that they really like going to school. I will also tell you outside of those pieces, girls that come up through a middle school, high school experience and then a single gender environment are authentically themselves for longer in middle school. They play together, they um, feel comfortable kind of being so goofy and silly and um, just young at heart. They don't feel pressured into um, adopting adulthood too fast. Um, which is really a magical thing to see on an all girls campus. Uh, our high school students, even in 10th grade, had uh, kickball out this afternoon and we're playing kickball in the courtyard and just having fun playing with each other um, without the social pressures of all the things that come with a co-educational environment. So the answer to your question about uniforms is yes. We are a uniform school. <laughs> there are some staple pieces of our program. Uh, one of those staple pieces is uniforms. So we wear uniforms here at Glow Academy and every other school in the Young Women's Leadership Network uh, also wears uniforms. So we're not on, on, on our own on that one. Um, some schools have way more strict uniforms than we do. Uh, we share a plaid with our sister school in East Harlem. So our our uniform plaid that comes with one of our skirts, um, our sisters in East Harlem wear, but we have lots of different uniform uh, varieties. Girls can wear pants, girls can wear shorts, girls can wear skirts. Um, uh, we have different kinds of uh, polo shirts. We have hoodies and sweatshirts and fleeces and sweaters. So you're not really limited to a one kind of outfit, but we are a uniform school. And that's because when you go to a serious job, you wear serious clothes and learning at GLOW is a serious business and we take ourselves seriously. So we're going to suit up and dress for success. And that's, and that's how we, we operate. Um, in addition to that, we are community, community eligible schools, so we serve uh, free breakfast and free lunch to everybody on campus, uh, oftentimes often adults as well. Um, and uh, we have a full functioning uh, school cafeteria, the Glow Cafe, and they serve some fabulous food. So uh, today we had... Um, what do we have? We had all beefaroni today, but we have chicken alfredo and um, roast turkey dinner. Um, I know Miss Shanta in the cafe made some amazing potatoes that just permeated the entire building uh, um, on Tuesday, and we were we were all salivating, ready for lunch to happen. In addition to that, we have a free after school program for our girls. Um, anybody is eligible to participate. Um, we host that program in partnership with the YMCA here on our campus, and it lasts until six o'clock at night. Um, it's actually run by Ms. Johnson, who's actually a GLOW parent. Um, so she has a, a, a heavy stake in our community and she's fabulous. And it's a program that is uh, all things uh, related to whole girl development. So it's not just academic supports, but it's also social and emotional development. They were making some healthy balanced snacks today um, and practicing their culinary skills. So uh, we have a free after school program for our girls here on campus. We also provide transportation, as I said earlier. Uh, in GLOW school buses, so you might have seen them around town. Uh, we pick up kids all the way from Carolina Beach to Castle Hayne to the river to Porter's Neck. So we're all over the county. We 
we can only afford to provide transportation within New Hanover County lines. However, we can't go over to Brunswick or to Pender, but if you can get your kid over the county line, we'll pick them up wherever is closest, all right? Any questions about those things? All right, you guys are easy, okay. Um, so I talk about this a lot, whole girl development, um, and that just means that we see your beautiful um, GLOW student as a whole package, not just a vessel for, for knowledge, but an opportunity to build all kinds of wonderful skills in order to set her up for success in adulthood. Um, so we're a small school, uh, everybody knows everybody, which is good and sometimes is bad, right? Uh, we're uh, certainly all up in each other's business from time to time as well. Um, but that also means that our girls have a lot of shared experiences. And one of the beautiful things about our school now as we're really growing is that our middle schoolers get to see our high schoolers really start to grow into uh, really successful young women. And our high schoolers get to model leadership and maturity and academic success for our middle school students, um, which is an unusual thing. Um, most middle schools kind of are self-contained areas for uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And anybody who's spent a lot of time with seventh graders understands why that happens uh, strategically. But uh, the beautiful thing about our campus is that our middle schoolers and our high schoolers get a lot of time to interact with each other, which is good for both groups of kids. And ultimately, we um, see over time the sisterhood bond that occurs between our girls. So uh, we talk a lot about sisterhood, meaning um, I always have your back. I might not always like you, but I always am going to support you, right? Uh, and that's what happens here on our campus. We foster sisterhood. In fact, right now we're we're shopping a a hashtag around, hashtag help a sister out. And we do shout outs where uh, we acknowledge how we're helping each other out and have each other's backs on campus as we're navigating this COVID experience uh, together, uh, both virtually and not. Um, so let me talk you through a little bit of kind of programmatically what's happening here on campus. Again, if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I'm talking about, throw your hand up or unmute your mic and let me know and I'd be happy to go down that rabbit hole and talk about our programs all day long because um, I'm pretty proud of them. So let's get started with academic programs. So we are middle school and high school, right? So in our middle school program, our girls come in, uh, they participate in teams as they move up their high school or their middle school experience. Um, traditionally, they take take English, math, science, social studies, a leadership advisory course and an elective every year. Um, some of our kiddos in our AIG track don't take English and social studies separately. It's a humanities program that they take together. Um, and that's a good opportunity for me to say that we do have an AIG program here on campus uh, for our sixth, seventh and eighth graders. We also are an AVID school. AVID is a specialized program. It stands for Advancement Via Individual Determination, but it's much easier to say AVID. Um, and AVID is a, is a specialized program that's just a, a, about kind of wraparound study skills and supports. So organizational skills, writing skills, critical thinking skills, all of the juicy stuff that comes together to allow for the, um, really strong, successful academic work to happen. Um, so our sixth or eighth grade program is kind of looks a, a lot like that um, with a lot of AVID practices infused in the general program across our sixth through eighth grade. But because we're a middle school, high school program, our eighth graders who um, are ready can start to take uh, high school courses. So right now on our campus, for example, our eighth graders are able to take math one. They are able to take earth and environmental science. We have some eighth graders that are taking world history. We have um, a couple of eighth graders that are taking some accelerated language courses like Spanish. So uh, we are able to do that here on our campus and offer really um, any approved high school course to an eighth grader 
um, if it ma matches up and makes sense, which allows for eighth graders to claim some high school course uh, credit early, which clears out room in their high school course of study towards the end of their high school study in their junior and senior year to take accelerated classes. If it fits for the kid, not all eighth graders are ready for that, but that's a benefit of being a middle school high school program. High school program or a high school setting, we have a number of different programs. We have um, our AVID program that gets becomes a lot more intense in our high school. Um, it becomes an elective. You apply to get into it. You're together as a group um, for uh, four years. It's it's uh, it's definitely a commitment. Uh, we have um, something called our Early Risers program. So Early Risers is a program that's here on our campus, but it's in conjunction or in partnership with Cape Fear Community College. We're the only school in um, New Hanover County and in Pender County that allows, um, that has a relationship with Cape Fear Community College that allows for our freshmen to start taking courses on their campus. Um, and I say on their campus, they really are right now taking virtual courses. They're on our campus, but they're getting community college credit for the courses that they're taking. So we have a group of early risers that um, currently are working towards a diploma program um, by the end of their, their sophomore year in business administration. So uh, we're able to offer that. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like an early college program, except for a little bit starts a little bit earlier and with with a, a, a little bit kind of a different lens. We also uh, participate in the College and Career Promise program with Cape Fear Community College, and some of our sophomores have um, been started taking uh, CTE courses on at Cape Fear Community College. But going into next year, our juniors are going to be taking some academic courses with Cape Fear Community College, which is great because they get high school credit for those courses, but they get college credit for those courses too, which is money uh, in their pocket, right? We have a growing advanced placement program here on campus. So for example, next year we'll offer AP Psychology, um, AP uh, language uh, lit and oh no language and comp and then uh, we are offering um, a two-year course of study for um, AP seminar and AP research so um, we have advanced placement courses that we're adding but again remember we're a growing program so next year we add junior year we also add a whole new set of courses here on campus in addition we have a whole high school registration handbook and if you go to our website you can click on handbooks it's right there on the on the on the front page and you can download and read to your heart's content all of the different courses that we offer. Um, we are in the middle of Phoenix Curriculum Month right now here on our campus, so we are updating all those things and helping all of our rising um, ninth graders, 10th graders, and 11th graders navigate their way through registration for next year. Um, so here on the screen in front of you, you see some pictures of our academic programs. You see girls in seminar talking about really great ideas in AVID. You have some girls building some underwater submersibles uh, in, our, in our STEM classes. Um, and of course, we have some girls writing on tables. I should say on our campus, we every classroom has a multitude of writable surfaces involved. Our walls are writable, our tables are writable, um, every kid has individual whiteboards. Uh, we like to make thinking very visible on our campus and allow for kids to interact with each other's ideas. So there's lots of thinking out loud on lots of different surfaces around campus, which you can kind of get a picture of here. All right, so our electives program uh, looks uh, like this. So at the middle school level, we have uh, art and music um, health and PE every year, which is fun times. I was just in a health and PE class today, and they were talking about relationships, which is always a good topic in sixth grade. Um, we also provide uh, our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders opportunities to be in our STEM lab doing uh, invention with our fabulous STEM teacher, Miss White. Um, and then as our kids uh, come through our program as well, we do an exploratory kick cooking program. So um, on our campus, we have three significant labs. We have a, a wet lab, which is really our chem lab and our bio lab. Um, we have a STEM lab, which is a, a more of a maker space um, with a science 
um, kind of in technology event. That's where all of our uh, 3D printers are located and um, all of our coding equipment. Uh, and then we have a culinary lab. So we have a state of the art um, industrial kitchen here on campus. And um, we have a six, hopefully eventually 12th grade uh, culinary arts program here. And one of the reasons why we have that is the founder of our school, whose name is Judy Gerard, is the president emeritus of HDTV and the Food Network. And so uh, we have a strong connection with foodies here on campus. Uh, so uh, if you were to scroll through some of our stuff, you'd see that Emeril Lagasse and Guy Fieri and Robert Irvine and Tyler Florence and Giada De Laurentiis. They've all been to our school. They've all been working with our girls. In fact, Robert Irvine just uh, recorded a video for our, uh, our ninth graders just a couple of weeks ago um, and they've been heavily involved. So we have this incredible kitchen and our middle schoolers and our high schoolers get to participate in learning all the things that are related to making food but also the business behind food. So how do you be a successful uh, restauranteur, uh, small business owner, um, managing all of those pieces, which is, um, which is an important part of making culinary arts a career for you. At our high school level, we have a full culinary arts program. Uh, we have a computer programming program. We have a visual arts program. Uh, we have um, both a vocal music program and a guitar program. We are a small school, so uh, if you have your heart set on a full band experience, this is not going to be the place where your heart's desires are met. But if you want to be part of a small ensemble, uh, we're the school for you. Uh, so uh, we have a small uh, music program, but uh, Mr. Merle, who, who teaches music here on campus, is passionate about what he does. We also have an all-girls drum line here on campus uh, who rock it out. Uh, and we, uh, we love it. Uh, we have a journalism program here on campus and we also have a world languages program. So uh, we, have a, we have a growing um, high school program in, in regards to electives. Uh, next year, we're looking to add some film uh, media to our, to our repertoire as well um, with the hopes that we will have a full film studio available to our high school students starting next year. So we'll see how that plays out. Any questions about academic programs so far or electives programs, um, or if I'm meeting all of your needs with my explanations? Um, we may have been talking about this and getting too excited and we might have missed out well, if you said this already, but um, is there, do you have middle school band? No, we don't have middle school band. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, That's okay. We, uh, you know, we're a small school, so uh, yeah, our middle school right. girls uh, explore lots of different things related to music, and they pick up guitar and ukulele, to be sure, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no trumpet. But not, okay, okay, okay. Yep. just curious about that. No worries. Okay. And you can join the drum line. It is yeah, I know. I, like, <laughs> I would like that. I don't know about Alina, but <laughs> I would join. Awesome. Any other questions? Yes. All right, go for it. Just really quick. So um, my daughter would be coming in with an IEP. Is that a problem? Do you... I, I love that you asked that question because I think it might be the next slide. Let's let's see. Perfect. And... Yep, it is. <laughs> so uh, Carmen, you teed that up perfectly. Thank you. Uh, we have a full exceptional children's program here on our campus, and uh, that is uh, that is for any student who um, has an individual education plan. Um, and we have a full spectrum of kiddos that are here on campus that get a full spectrum of services through our exceptional children's program and through our uh, faculty and staff here at GLOW. So um, at our middle school level, that means that we have a, a school psychologist who's here on our campus um, uh, and next year full time. Uh, she's also the director of our exceptional children's programming. Uh, we have three full-time EC teachers that are dedicated to our middle school population. We have one EC teacher assistant. We, uh, for the majority of our EC students, by the time they're in middle school, they are doing um, a heavily supported 
co-education inclusion model. So that means kids are in general education settings and our EC teachers push in with them and work alongside them and sometimes pull them out into resource small groups during that class period. Um, at our middle school level, our classes are 80 minutes long. So, um, so there's opportunity for them to both get uh, yeah, support in class, but also pull out and get small group support as needed. We also have a fully self-contained program for students who need uh, a more structured, more self-contained setting. Um, and it's a great program. They do lots of really cool stuff in that program. Um, those kiddos also um, are not fully isolated in one room all day or have the benefit of being able to hang out in a room all day with a fabulous teacher. They also join uh, our um, grade levels for electives, for leadership advisory, and for all special programs. So we have a full spectrum of services for our kiddos with, um, with IEPs, including speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy. As our kids matriculate or move up uh, into our high school program, we kind of have a dual track to graduation. Uh, we have a, a college and career readiness track, and then we have an occupational course of study track. They both end in the same place, which, uh, which is a high school diploma. And um, we have a full-time uh, EC teacher that is dedicated to both study skill support for our high school uh, level students that have um, IEPs, um, which is really targeted for instructional support for in, in courses like math and English language arts. Um, and then uh, he also teaches our occupational course of study program. Uh, and those kiddos are doing a lot of crazy, crazy and wonderful things, including um, running a school-based business here on our campus, um, going out into the community and getting um, experience with jobs um, in the greater community. Um, and, uh, running our school concessions. So they make um, some really fabulous popcorn and cotton candy for all of us and run our coffee bar, which I think is essential. I don't know about you. So, uh, uh, so, so we have two different um, kind of programs on our campus, one for middle school, one for high school, but we, we have a full functioning exceptional children's program. Um, Carmen, does that answer your question? All right, perfect. Um, one of the really unique things about GLOW that is very different from a traditional middle school and high school setting is we have an additional program on our campus that no other public school in New Hanover County or Brunswick County or Pender County or Columbus County has. We have a freestanding, dedicated college bound program. This is one of the core components of that young women's leadership model that we're a part of. Our college bound program is not a traditional school counselor program. Um, our college bound program um, is really entirely centered on college and career readiness um, through programmatic supports starting in sixth grade. Um, and so um, really the goal with our college bound program is to start in sixth grade with early college awareness. So college trips, uh, local colleges, UNCW, Cape Fear Community College, maybe UNCP. Uh, getting a sense for what a college campus looks like, getting a sense for what college life is like um, beyond just academics, um, starting to build awareness, starting to build language um, surrounding college. Um, by the time our kids are in 11th and 12th grade, that program really significantly narrows um, and every student on our campus has a specialized college advisor whose job is to find the right fit college or set of colleges and partner them with the right kid on our campus with the right amount of financial support to make it happen. And so it is a uniquely private school model that is related to um, making sure that kids are able to access an incredible college experience if that is the right fit for them um, and making sure that all of the pieces get taken care of and um, our, our you know, kids and parents are held by their hand through the entire process. So it, it takes any of the mystery behind it out of it. So 
one of, for example, one of the things that we offer is every kid that is on our campus starting in ninth grade has a score account through a, a specialized program um, and starts building an intense college resume um, electronically with our college bound director and college bound uh, counselor uh, here on campus. Um, so you don't have to make that up in, in 12th grade, when is, which is when most seniors uh, like arrive at the idea that they're going to go to college. Uh, you start building that in ninth grade. And so you have a robust opportunity. That program is really amazing because you, our ninth graders actually start in ninth grade partnering and matching up with different universities um, and colleges around the country and getting to have um, interview experiences with them starting right out the gate in their fall semester of their ninth grade year. So we have a lot of things that are happening and you can see on this graphic that as you move up through our program, the level of opportunity for our students starts to grow. Um, we go from local to national in experience, um, but also in opportunities. We want our kids to have lots of opportunities on college campuses, lots of opportunities in specialized programs like Outward Bound, um, which is something that we have sent our freshmen on. Um, lots of opportunities to build um, build um, self-confidence, but also to push their boundaries a little bit so that they can really claim success out there on their own in their freshman year in college. Um, so our college bound program and for our high school um, students really is very hands-on. Uh, it's very individual. Um, it is about intense, um, individual attention for each one of our students uh, so that she is really set up for as much success as possible. Um, and that means that ushering or walking through all of our students through the entire process. Our kids start practicing writing their college entry, entry essay in ninth grade, for example. Um, so that by the time we're ready to go to college and apply for college in 12th grade, you have a whole bank of opportunities to pull from. Um, so you're not having to make it up on the fly. Uh, our kids start with College Discovery Discovery Day in ninth grade, where they're meeting with a whole, a whole day of meeting with admissions counselors and practicing all kinds of things that they're going to need to start building um, some moxie with by the time they get to their junior and senior year. So it's a very tailored program. Um, it's, uh, it's a program that um, the only one that's kind of similar to it here in New Hanover County would be at Cape Fear Academy, which is a, which is a private school here in town. So, um, so that, that is unique about our campus and it's a, it's a benefit uh, to the students that go through our program here. Uh, eventually when we're fully built out, our college bound program also continues to support our students after graduation into their college experience. So once you are in GLOW, once a GLOW girl, always a GLOW girl, you are in it to win it. And we're not gonna let you go when you walk across the stage. We're gonna be providing alumni support to you all the way through to your college degree, um, which is um, a commitment that we have, but also we as a community of women um, understand is really important to help our girls to be truly the amazing, successful, professional women who are gonna transform the communities that I live in and you live in uh, once they finish up. Um, and finally, we do have a growing athletic program. Let me be very clear. Start small, we still are small <laughs> in our academic program. That is not the real focus of our program here at Glow Academy, but we do recognize our girls are very physically active and we wanna create opportunities for them to express that. We uh, had a, a, a middle school soccer program last year. Um, they were small but mighty. In their, in their prowess. Uh, we have had a, a running club um, that has participated in three and five Ks uh, since 2016 um, here on campus. We have a competitive step team here on campus uh, and you might have seen them if you have gone to things like the Azalea Festival Parade or to the MLK Parade. Um, they also go to the competitive step team competitions, although not this year, because that's not happening. Um, last year, we also started to field our first ever 
archery team which um, at first gave me heartburn as a as I'm as a school principal but our girls were rocking it uh, with their with their archery skills uh, and so so we're small uh, and but we're growing I think next year we're going to add a cross-country team to the mix um, but if 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 you believe that your your student is destined to be a 4a athletic champ uh, you might want to check out Hoggard um, and because uh, Glow is not going to be your place. But um, if you're in it for whole girl and athletics as a part of that, we might be your people. Uh, right across the street from us is Maves Park and they are building a new gymnasium uh, and we work in, in concert with them. So we're excited to see what kind of opportunities that opens up for us. Who knows, maybe volleyball is in our future or uh, perhaps a basketball team. I will say that every year we host a faculty student basketball team. Faculty always wins because we beast it, but uh, who knows what new opportunities will come with a new gym across the street. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention what we're doing right now in terms of COVID. So um, I will say that we have been operating with students on campus um, in some way, shape or form since August 17th. Uh, we have um, uh, welcomed um, the majority of our sixth graders. So about 75% of our sixth graders are back with us at least two days a week, either in A cohort or B cohort, starting at the beginning of October on October 5th. Um, and about 60% of our high schoolers are back on campus with us. And we are starting to flex more and more students back on campus as needed. Uh, we were really proud of our girls in a tough, tough year this year where engagement was rough and virtual learning, learning was not everybody's style. We had um, over 84% of our students passed all of their classes. Um, Nearly 30% actually of our eighth grade made A honor roll or AB honor roll. So they were really rocking it out. They've been working really hard. Um, and I would like to say that's a big testament to our teaching staff who's worked really hard to make sure our girls feel included and uh, are not disappearing behind the icon on the screen. Um, so ultimately, we really want our students to feel confident in who they are as women. Uh, feel confident in their voice and in their presence, in saying no, in saying yes, uh, knowing their mind and, and being able to walk that path with, with assurance that they're doing the right thing. We want them to feel pushed, um, but also supported. So we, we do adopt a rigorous course of study, but we also want them to feel um, that they can do it and are successful. Um, so we have a lot of academic supports in place to help them to, to claim that success. And then ultimately at the end of the day, we believe that no matter what uh, background you have, no matter what place you are from, no matter what zip code you are in the city of Wilmington or beyond, college is, a, is an opportunity for you if you want it. And we work really hard to, uh, remove any barriers that might exist that would allow for you to claim that as a, as a life path, um, if, if that is the right fit for you. Um, so I'll close out and open up to any kind of questions um, just with a couple of pictures of our beautiful campus. Uh, in, because you haven't been here maybe and you haven't gotten to see us because we're all in pandemic land. We truly do have a beautiful campus that was designed around the idea of looking like a college campus. Um, we have a beautiful quad that lives uh, between our middle school and our high school buildings. Um, we have classrooms that are um, um, centered around um, tables. So our students sit at tables to collaborate with each other, not individual desks separated from each other. Um, we have a beautiful cafeteria um, with a wall of fame of women from all different walks of life who have done amazing change-making things uh, in the world around us. And we have a student center that is a collaborative space. Um, and you see it here uh, with lots of different types of furniture, uh, lots of different opportunities for girls to access different kinds of technology um, co and collaborative experiences with you. Hi, Tim. Are you getting my trash? Excuse me just a second. And uh, 
and together uh, we make this campus come alive with the incredible girls that come to school here every day. We host lots of different events here on campus from parent university to uh, you know movies on the lawn. Uh, we have a community picnic every year with all of our GLOW students together in a space and eat together and play together. Um, we like the community that is our school that comes together to uh, to make us alive and whole together as a GLOW, as a GLOW place. All right. So finally, um, I'll just say that our mission in life is uh, to make um, every kid feel like she is heard, um, she is valued, and that um, and that she uh, is the center of our universe. Because every kid who's a student at a school should feel like that. That this place exists for her, um, and that is true for parents too. We really aim to provide five-star service to our students and to our parents to make sure that you have um, all of the supports that you need in order to um, make middle school and high school happen as successfully as possible. It's not always easy. There are definitely bumps in the road along the way. Middle school can be a little messy for teenage girls. Uh, if you are a teenage girl, close your ears when I say that. Uh, but we do that pretty successfully here at GLOW um, and make sure that you come out on the other end relatively unscathed. All right, so what questions do you have for me about this uh, program? program. Um, hello, I do have a question. Um, for the sixth grade and I guess for all grades, how many electives can a student take at one time? So in our middle school program, <laughs> In our sixth and seventh grade programs, uh, they take one elective per semester, I mean per quarter rather, sorry. So that's four a year. Um, one of those has to be health and PE, okay? Um, the other kind of piece that is a non-negotiable for us is that every student, doesn't matter what program you're in, goes through leadership advisory all year long, every year. Um, and that is, where we do all kinds of things related to uh, a growing girl, whether it is conflict resolution or academic mapping or personal hygiene, we do it all in leadership advisory. So that happens for every kid every year, um, once a day. And then um, one, one elective per quarter in sixth and seventh grade. In eighth grade, typically you go in one of two directions, either still with that four um, electives a year, or some of our eighth graders choose to take a high school class, and that takes the place of two of the last two electives. So if I were to take world history, for example, that would be on a block, and I would take it for a semester instead of, um, instead of um, say, music and art. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What other questions do you have? Go for it, Carmen. What you got? Just um, if I filled out an application, an, an enrollment application online, what is my next step? It's been a, it's been a couple of weeks. Your next step is to wait. So we are, um, the, the law is pretty, the law is pretty clear about this one. So you fill out an application and we call that the initial application for enrollment. We are in a window of, of time right now called our open enrollment window. It started the 1st of January, it ends February 19th. So in a couple of weeks, if we close that open enrollment window with um, fewer applications than we do spots, which to be clear, there are a lot of schools who really push to um, have a wait list and I get that. But for us, it's about right fit, right kid, right? Like we want to make sure that we're the right fit for your family. Um, we don't just want, we just don't want everybody to rush in. So our goal is for everybody who has applied to, to get in. So we have lots of personal conversations with families. We have lots of conversations to make sure that this is the right fit for you. Uh, so we close 
that open enrollment period on February 19th. And if we close with uh, fewer applications than we do spots, you all get an email from me the next day that says, congratulations, you have secured a spot at Glow Academy for the following year. And then you will fill out a full enrollment packet, which is a lot more paperwork. Um, and Miss Washington, our data manager, helps kind of usher you through that. So the next step for you, Carmen, is to wait to get an email from me saying you're in, right? When, um, when that happens, Mr. Kirby, our Dean of Students, will be in contact with you. And what happens in the enrollment process is while you're filling out paperwork and doing that kind of stuff, we also have a full onboarding program that starts with our kids. So um, Mr. Kirby will partner, will, will um, meet with you individually. He meets with every single family that comes into GLOW. Um, he does a lot of questions and does an interest survey with kids and gets to know families. Then you'll be partnered up with uh, a GLOW faculty member and perhaps a GLOW student, depending on the age of the kid. Um, to um, start to build relationships with um, people on staff um, starting in March and April. Um, then for our incoming sixth graders, we host a summer bridge program for our students, uh, which we'll see what that looks like in the coming uh, summer. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have some kind of summer bridge program here on campus. And uh, that is entirely about getting to know the GLOW community for our incoming sixth graders. It's a fun um, kind of campy kind of program um, where that is run by our sixth grade faculty um, so that they get to know your kids and your girls get to meet each other before the pressure of the first day of school, which it can be overwhelming for anybody, but for an incoming sixth grader, that's a big moment. So, um, so we wanna make sure that that is that is safe and, and secure for kids. So we build relationships way earlier than that. So coming to school on the first day is, you know, not, not anything new. Um, so be on the lookout for an email. That's the next step. Any other questions? Yes, hi, this is Melissa Story. Hi. I was, hi, I was curious, thank you so much for all of this uh, wonderful information. This has been so helpful. Um, specifically, I'm question about. I have a question about how approximately how many spaces are available for incoming sixth graders, for example. We have 125 spots available for our incoming okay. sixth grade class. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. My additional question is for languages. Um, for middle school, what I, I didn't quite catch what languages were available. Thank sure. You. So we we start offering um, students in our middle school uh, program access to language study starting in eighth grade. Um, uh -huh. This year has been a wonky year. Um, we don't have very many eighth graders that are taking um, foreign language with us right now. Uh, but in the past, it's been Spanish. Um, moving into our high school program, we have um, kind of a hybrid program. So next year we will have a we have a full um, world language teacher on campus. Um, um, this year we haven't had one. Uh, and that's just because of a transitional moment um, related to COVID. Um, but we've had uh, we have students on our campus who are studying a wide variety of different languages um, virtually, um, including French. Um, we have a couple very dedicated students in uh, Japanese. Uh, we have uh, some kids in German. We have one kid in Russian. Um, but predominantly, our students are studying Spanish, and that's the, the foreign language that we offer here um, physically on campus. Thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? For any kids that are on the call, uh, rising sixth graders, let me get this one out of the way because this is the one question that I'm always asked by sixth graders and I'm really surprised that I haven't gotten this question. And that is related to lockers, which every rising sixth grader is really passionate about. Um, and I just wanna deliver the sad news that we do not have lockers here on GLOW Academy's campus. So if you have been saving up your K-12 
cat magnet collection to line the internal guts of your locker, you're going to have to find another place for that. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't have lockers on campus, but we have lots of other fun stuff uh, to replace lockers. I have one quick question. Um, what is the cost of uniforms? So, uh, it depends on what your kiddo wants to wear. Um, uh, we have uh, a requirement for a glow polo, which is logoed. And um, that polo at our uniform store, or the uniform store in town is about $16 per shirt. Um, then glow girls can wear either in middle school, can wear navy blue or black pants, and I don't really care where you get them. You can um, get them at the uniform store or you can get them wherever you would like to. Old Navy is a good choice. Um, uh, as, long as, um, as long as they are um, school appropriate. Um, so um, anywhere from that up to um, one, I think the plaid skirt is maybe $35 um, depending. We also have, um, a whole uniform closet here on campus because we got a lot of girls who grow pretty quickly in middle school. And so uh, it is does not take a lot of time for a girl who is in sixth grade to not fit in the uniforms that you buy them in sixth grade. So we have a rotating uh, collection of uniforms through our uniform closet run by our full-time social worker here on campus, Miss Staley, who's amazing. Um, so uh, we have opportunities for parents to switch out uniforms uh, and size up um, because uh, because girls are growing pretty uh, pretty quickly in our middle school program and our high school program. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Okay, so right now it says that um, you're. Well, you guys are offering full online st um, studying right now, like the virtual only. And my question is, after the pandemic, will you still be offering that or it will the girls will have to go in school normally? So this is a million dollar question for every single public school in the state of North Carolina, right? So this, this, uh, this pandemic has introduced uh, virtual learning uh, to the mainstream across all campuses. Um, what we foresee in, as we move forward is having um, a virtual option for our girls um, and an on-campus option for our girls. Um, because we now have girls that are enrolled in Glow Academy who don't just necessarily live in southeastern North Carolina, so we we see that probably growing as an um, as a as an option for girls and for students across North Carolina. Right now, we have um, only about 25% of our middle school population that's 100% virtual only. Most of our students are coming back to campus in some way, shape, or form during the week for some learning. Um, that that number grows in our in our high school program, and it's not surprising for us. Um, our high schoolers are doing a lot of different things, including working right now. Um, so um, about 40% of our high schoolers are 100% virtual. Um, ultimately, we want our kids to be back here on campus um, as much as possible. We think that that is the opportunity for success that our girls need, just culturally and socially and emotionally, not just academically. But we will likely have. Um, a virtual academy that runs alongside our on-campus option for our girls next year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? No questions, it's just a comment. Um, sure. You know, we've lived here since 1996 and once in a while you find a what appears to be an absolute diamond in the rough and we just appreciate the call here tonight and all of this great information it just it's amazing that this is in our backyard and uh, appreciate all that you're doing oh thanks for that and we appreciate what you guys are doing too just to be clear um yeah, one of the things that is really kind of amazing is we've been around for five years, but not a lot of people know about us here at GLOW. So um, thanks for showing up and asking questions and for spreading the word about us, because I think what we do is pretty special for our kiddos.
Um, Shauna, I, I'm saying Shauna, I'm thinking that's who you are. Um, that's the name on the screen. You have your hand raised. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if you knew about the number of seventh grade slots. I don't know. I want to say it's maybe about 20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Of course. So if you are um, um, if you are on this call and you have or listening in the cyber universe because we're streaming as well and have not filled out an app an initial application for enrollment, my advice to you is if you are interested in this program to go ahead and do that. Those applications for enrollment are numbered um, as they come in, which directly corresponds to your number in line when it comes to spots and placement. So uh, the sooner the better um, as it's related to um, enrollment in the program. Um, if you um, have already turned in an initial application for enrollment, you are good to go. Um, and we'll be in touch with you soon. Speaking of being in touch, Miss Jessica Probst has just turned back on her, ca her camera. Jessica, do you wanna talk about what you and Miss Tipton are doing? Uh, and Miss Futrell, sorry, married, gotta get it down, um, uh, in terms of supporting new families. Yeah, hey, um, my kids are eating dinner next to me. So, Hello. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we're um, we're just trying to make sure that everybody who applies um, and sends in their application gets on our list in order, so that if we do have a lottery situation, we make sure that you are kind of um, first in line, and that um, anybody who gets accepted is going to feel connected to us until it's time to start. Because sometimes that that can seem like a long time in between February and. August when we start. So we're going to have a lot of opportunities for families, hopefully, to be able to connect with one another, to get to know each other a little bit, um, and to just kind of stay in touch and connected um, with the school. So we'll be sending out updates and information so that when your student is ready to come to school, they already feel like they know some people, they've got some people that they can be connected to, and they're coming to GLOW just ready to get going in August. I'm gonna mute myself now, children. So I'll hang out here. If you have an individual question that you'd like to ask me, um, I'm in it to win it tonight. Um, but if you have had all of your questions answered and you wanna go on with your life, I fully support that as well. So uh, thanks for showing up. Thanks for joining us and being a part of this conversation. And uh, we hope to see you uh, with your GLOW student next year. All right, bye guys. But certainly hang out. If